Bacterial endocarditis is an infection of the lining of the heart and often involves heart valves. The infection usually starts when bacteria enters the bloodstream and then subsequently attaches to the endocardium. But keep in mind that not all bacteria entering the bloodstream are capable of causing endocarditis and not all valves are infected equally. Regardless, the diagnosis of endocarditis is often made by culturing one of these bacteria from the blood, sometimes in combination with direct visualization on a cardiac echo. But on your exams and other standardized tests, we love testing your ability to associate historical findings with common bacteria that cause endocarditis in those settings. A lot of this is trivial, but to keep this list organized in your mind, let's divide these trivial clues into heart valves and historical hints. The mitral valve is most often involved. So if you were to come across a situation or test question that's not providing you any specific clues and is asking what heart valve is most likely involved, the mitral valve would be my best educated guess. Test makers love testing endocarditis and the tricuspid valve. The thing to remember here is that it's common to see tricuspid valve endocarditis in intravenous drug users, with common bugs being Staph aureus, Pseudomonas, and Candida. For your historical hints, there are three main categories, acute onset, gradual onset, and a basket of miscellaneous medical historical clues. In cases of rapid onset of symptoms, especially in patients with normal heart valves, Staph aureus is a common cause, along with ASIC organisms, which are also known to affect native heart valves. These are Haemophilus, Aggregatobacter, Cardiobacterium, Eichinella, and Kingella. In cases that are more gradual in onset or subacute, especially in the setting of dental procedures, think about Virdan strep. In patients with a history of colon cancer, think strep bovis. In patients with prosthetic heart valves, think staph epidermidis. Because part of the diagnosis requires culturing these bugs, obtaining multiple blood cultures plays an important role in making the diagnosis. But in cases you still suspect endocarditis when cultures are unrevealing or negative, you should start thinking about Coxiella and Bartonella species. So there you have it, a quick overview of the microbiology of infective endocarditis. If you like this video and found it helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. This helps this video rate higher on YouTube, making it visible to more people and students. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, so we could tell you when we release more videos like this one.